Hi, welcome to The Secret is in the Sauce. I'm Barbara Gerhard with the Grundy Library, and I'm here to tell you about what the series is about. The Secret in the Sauce is interviews with chefs, cooks, caterers, bartenders, these people who are involved with food and their favorite recipes. We'll interview these individuals and then they'll present their cooking and beverage expertise. I hope you'll enjoy. The secret is in the sauce. Good morning, Sue. Welcome. Good morning, Barbara. How are you? Good. And you? Great. Thank you. Good. Good. Thank you for participating in the Secrets in the Sauce program. We're very excited for the ratatouille. Didn't realize ratatouille could be used um, as a cold dish. Um, thought of it more of as, as a stew and uh, probably heavily influenced by Disney and Ratatouille the movie. Um, so thank, thank you for bringing that to our attention. So I, I have a few questions for you. I'd like to ask, how was it that you first learned to express yourself with food? And when, where does your passion for food come from? Well, when I was younger uh, in my family, uh, very creative, my father was an artist, he was, uh, Basically, he worked as a production manager in an ad agency, uh, but he was always painting and creating at home. And as my mother would in the kitchen, uh, my sister would sketch and draw and create. So I guess I found my medium messing around in the kitchen. Oh, your palate, so to speak. Yes. Excuse the pun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so where was it that you formalized your culinary skills? Uh, when I was 25, uh, I didn't attend college. After high school, I worked and saved my money. And then I traveled for about two and a half, three years. When I returned, I had a plan, which was to attend the restaurant school in Philadelphia on the University of Pennsylvania campus in that area, which now it is called Walnut Hill College. And it has gone from a two year to a four year program. So I kind of slid in there and, and got my associate's degree and kind of went on from there and uh, did all kinds of different jobs. Great, great. And so now you're, with your own business and you cater in the area, correct? Yes, I cater, uh, but mostly what I do, which I have come to love is teaching adults and children how to make simple recipes or take a more difficult recipe and make it much easier um, and kitchen friendly to make with your kids or for yourself or anything like that. Oh, okay. So a more, a more personalized, if you will, um feeling yes. job yes career exactly. excuse me career yes wonderful wonderful so um how how was it that you came upon the ratatouille i, I would imagine you've got so so many in your repertoire to choose from why, why did you settle on the ratatouille well in the summer there is always an abundance of zucchini and tomatoes and yellow squash and mm -hmm. sometimes eggplant. Uh, being over at the community garden as I am, it seems to be those four are some of the more popular and easier to grow vegetables. And mm -hmm. I myself have grown all of those things. And after a while you're thinking, what can I do with these things? Uh -huh. Because everyone is so sick of <laughs> all of them. Um, and it's something that you can make ahead you can make it the day before, cover it up, pop it in the refrigerator, and when you need it, you can pull it out. If you like, you can heat it up or just leave it at room temperature. Um, it is a vegan dish, which I am not vegan, but I have a lot of family and friends who are both vegetarian and vegan, and it's something that can satisfy everyone. So it's just mm -hmm. basic convenience and ease of purchasing the ingredients if you don't um, grow them. So it, it's pretty simple and it, it, most people enjoy it. My daughter, uh, my 11 year old loves it and she's not a huge fan of anything that's put together. She likes her food separate, but she okay. loves it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I can relate to that. I, I have a family member who everything is apportioned on the plate, things don't touch. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so what is your favorite dish to cook? 
Do you have anything? Well, I do actually, it's really hard to narrow it down, but it seems to me, I get excited about every new change of season. Uh, okay. I get really inspired by whatever is fresh and local. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, in the winter or in the fall, I love to make a chicken pumpkin goulash using chicken thighs. And it's spelled G-H-O-U-L-A-S-H mm -hmm. for Halloween. And okay. it's just like a really delicious, yummy, warm, chickeny pumpkin stew. Mm -hmm. And it be has become a family favorite here in this house. Um, I love the new season and the challenge that comes with what you can find and what you want to make and what will satisfy everyone. Mm -hmm. Is there a least favorite that you have to cook? Uh, I do not cook any organ meats. Um, okay. No mm -hmm. liver or anything like that. That was my punishment as a child living in a <sighs> home with parents that loved liver. So none of that will, will ever come into this house. How about oysters? We love oysters. Yes. We don't <laughs> actually bring them into the house. We'll enjoy them out at a restaurant. Um, okay. uh, it just, it's easier than having to wrestle with the oyster knife at home. But yes, we love oysters. Yeah. That's a new food for me. Relatively new. The oysters. That's great that you're trying it. We love seafood. Any kind of chilled seafood, whether it is cooked and chilled or raw, um, mm -hmm. as long as they're from a good company where you know you will not get any kind of foodborne illness, you can enjoy them and not worry about sickness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, responsibly sourced. Right? Yeah, exactly. So is there a signature dish that you consider you for yourself, a dish that you consider a signature for yourself? Believe it or not, ironically, it is a dish that I never really made before the past, probably, excuse me, I probably didn't make it all that much when I was younger because I didn't grow up with it. But my husband's family are Puerto Rican mm -hmm. and there is so much great flavor in Puerto Rican food. And mm -hmm. I love to make pollo guisado and the... Puerto Rican rice and beans with the pigeon peas. Um, that has kind of become my go-to dish when we're having company or when we're going to see his family. And it seems to satisfy everyone. Great, great. Is there an herb then that you prefer to use or is a favorite? Lots of thyme. I love herbs. And that is one thing uh, that I am able to grow really easily. I don't have that much of a green thumb. I do belong to the community garden. I'm wearing mm -hmm. the shirt. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of trial and error with mm -hmm. my gardens, but herbs are one thing that I get right every time. They're basically weeds. So they are very, very easy to grow. Um, again, it is a uh, seasonal. In the summer, I use tons of basil. In the spring and the winter and the fall, I use tons and tons of thyme, especially lemon thyme, okay. which is wonderful. Um, so it really depends. A lot of bay leaves in the winter. Mm -hmm. Anything fresh and seasonal is, is definitely my go-to. So it does change up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, with the, the uh, cooking club at the library, uh, Cook the Book, I don't know if you're familiar with it, we would meet four times a year. Um, one of the participants introduced the group to lavender as an herb to cook with. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, lavender and lilac are usually my spring go-tos. Um, I, I know it's not for everyone, but I just like to experiment really. Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's lost on my family, they, it's not for them. Uh, I do like to experiment. I like to take lavender and dry it out a bit and make a lavender lemon shortbread cookie, which Ooh. sounds really, really fancy, but it's not. It's basically a quick refrigerator cookie that just has a little bit of lemon and a little bit of lavender mm -hmm. added, just mm -hmm. a bit. And it's very easy to make and it's not intimidating at all, but it, it appeals to a lot of people who like to incorporate botanicals into their cooking. Mm -hmm. So in your kitchen, what are, or what would you consider your three essential tools? Yes. Um, a good chef knife. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. Basically has to be something that fits well in your hand, 
feels comfortable to you and you're able to sharpen it because as you know, when you have a dull knife, you're actually working harder instead of making it really easy and keeping that knife really sharp. That's number one. Number two for me is a tool that I use all the time. It's a microplane, which is just, well, most people know what a microplane is. It's just a really fine grater. I should have brought it in here. Uh, I use that probably more often than anything else. I use it for garlic. Uh, if I'm not smashing and chopping garlic, I use it for chocolate, mm -hmm. nutmeg, ginger. I keep, always keep ginger in my freezer in a Ziploc bag. I add ginger to probably about 50% of everything that I cook. We do a lot of Asian food. Mm -hmm. um, ginger is a great way to add zest and spice and a little bit of heat without having to do too much work. So buy mm -hmm. some ginger and keep it in your freezer. Um, and probably my third tool would be a good cast iron pan mm. that you can reseason and you can keep in generations and pass it down. They're mm -hmm. wonderful to sear a piece of meat or you can cook cornbread in them. A good cast iron pan, it doesn't have to be expensive or fancy or a brand name. If pick one up, treat it well, learn how to treat it well, and mm -hmm. you'll have it forever. Yeah, yeah, I uh, am acquainted with some foodies, if you will, and um, I do know that their pans came by way of their grandmothers. Yeah, they were definitely, definitely passed down. So if you were going out to eat, what meal would it be? Would it be lunch, dinner, brunch, breakfast? <sighs> I love brunch. It is it is my favorite meal. I went to brunch yesterday, which is so wonderful. Uh, it's something really decadent about sipping on a mimosa uh, at noon, uh, uh -huh. and you have nothing that you need to worry about after that. It's just a great way to relax and enjoy a meal and spend time with your friends or your family and just relax. Uh, mm -hmm. I do love a good brunch. Mm -hmm. So if you had friends coming for dinner, what are you cooking? If it was summertime, I would probably make a couple of salads, a grain salad, like maybe a quinoa salad, mm -hmm. uh, a green salad, a kale. I have a great kale salad, which mm -hmm. again, you can make ahead of time and you pull it out of the refrigerator and it, as it sits overnight, it just improves the flavor uh, and probably do some grilled meats um, if we're having a vegetarian friend maybe something else that way they'll feel satisfied. Uh, but I like to do a variety of whatever is fresh and seasonal. Mm -hmm. Great, great, perfect. Perfect for barbecue cookout, summertime. Um, do you have any foods that would you would eat that no matter what they're prepared or foods that you wouldn't eat? You said the, the organ meats you wouldn't eat. Yeah, that. I've tried, and unfortunately, I have to say this, this is very unpopular. For whatever reason, I have tried many, many times. I just cannot get down any form of goat cheese. It, the funk and the musk of the cheese just kind of covers over my entire palate, and I can't taste anything else. Um, mm -hmm. So I have a really hard time with that. Um, that's a really tough question. Um, I'm going to come back to that one. Okay. Um, do you prefer preparing desserts, main dishes or sandwiches, or you really have nothing, no preference? I love a one pot meal if I can get away with it. Um, mm -hmm. In the, the winter, that works out really well because as you cook, it heats up the house. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't work so well in the summer. So what we have been doing a lot lately are sheet pan meals. Oh. We get the oven going get all the vegetables together, whatever we're making. Uh, if we're using a protein, we will add that. Um, and then we will pop everything into the oven or we do the sheet pan meals on the grill, which works really well too. And the house doesn't heat up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really great thing to learn is to do something you can cook all together all mm -hmm. in one time. And the cleanup's easier. Exactly. <sighs> Fussing, you just get it in there, get everyone fed. And mm -hmm. it's all good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, those are all the questions I had for you. So is there anything you'd like to add? Um, I just would love to encourage people to try something new and don't let it intimidate you. Um, 
And of course you want to try to find something that your family or your friends will love and something that's easy to prepare and that you can do ahead of time. I love to cook ahead of time. It just seems to make my life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I, I know with the heat, um, I'm not doing as much cooking now as I have in the past. My husband sort of has taken over that responsibility since he's retired, but cooking in the morning, especially in the summer, before the summer, the heat, heat of the day would hit you, plus the sun in the kitchen. Yes. Yeah. Doing that ahead of time. We were just talking about what to have for dinner tonight, because as you know, it's going to be really hot today. Mm. Um, so I'm going to make some salads and I kind of keep everything a bit separate. And that's only because my daughter is more likely to eat what I make if I mm -hmm. keep a little bit of cold pasta here and some chopped vegetables here so mm -hmm. she can create her own her mm -hmm. own food. And another thing that we make a lot in the summer in, in the morning is a very large frittata with whatever vegetables we have on hand. It changes mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. uh, and we eat that cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sue, for your time today. And uh, we look forward to making the ratatouille uh, the dish that uh, you prepared for us Hi, and, and sharing that with our audience. Chef so and thank I you so much. Today to make you one of my all time favorite dishes. It is called Ratatouille. And yes, many of you have seen the Disney movie and that has just skyrocketed the popularity of this dish, which is perfect for summer. Most people have a garden and if you don't have a garden, you can easily buy these vegetables to make this dish. Um, before I get into the dish, I wanted to explain the three components that make this dish what it is. The first component is a sauce that goes in the bottom of the pan. Very, very easy to make. It is called piperade. And I know I probably butchered that pronunciation. It is French because this dish is from the south of France and it actually originated as a peasant dish. Coarsely chopped vegetables thrown into a pot and simmered on low with garlic and olive oil and thyme and salt and pepper. But now it's elevated to this beautifully layered dish. Um, okay, so component number one, piperade. My French speaking friends are probably laughing at this. I should have consulted you because I don't actually know how to pronounce it, but basically super easy. Tomato, roasted red pepper sauce with some garlic and some thyme and some olive oil. Puree it up, boom. You have a smoky, sweet, slightly spicy base. If you don't wanna roast your own peppers, you can buy a jar or a can. What makes it smokier is using some smoked paprika, which is extremely easy to find anywhere. You can get it at any store. It's a good thing to have in your pantry. You can use fresh thyme or you can use dried thyme. And if you like anything else, you can add that too. I like to take a fancy recipe that's very precise and I like to break it down and make it simple for anyone to make, any skill level. So that's what this is. If you want the super ultra fancy preparation for ratatouille, Google, and you could follow the directions, but it's going to take you about four hours to make. So this is a very simple ratatouille. And here we go. I'm getting myself out of order. Here's the piperade. This is component number one. Component number two are our beautiful summer vegetables, which you can get any time of the year. Plum tomato, zucchini, yellow squash, and Japanese eggplant. You can use any kind of eggplant you like. I like Japanese because they're all about the same size. So it works and layers beautifully and it looks fabulous. It looks like you've spent all day on this dish and you haven't. Component number three, which you can whip up while your ratatouille is baking. A simple vinaigrette to sprinkle over the top before you serve. 
You can use any vinegar or any acid that you like. I am using some balsamic vinegar, a little extra virgin olive oil, and I have fresh thyme and fresh basil and some freshly ground pepper and some kosher salt. You can use any salt you want. I like kosher salt. It's easy to find, it's flaky, and it has texture. So I'm going to layer this and you will get to see how you do it and how easy it is. This is a bay leaf. This is being removed, obviously. That wouldn't be too nice to taste. So you take your peeper rod sauce and you simply layer it in the bottom of any casserole dish, anything that's oven proof. You could make a really large one or you could just make a small one in a pie plate, which is what I'm doing today. Uh, you're gonna find yourself probably with some extra vegetables and that's okay. You can simply use them and make a smaller peeper rod, uh, a smaller ratatouille with your extra peeper rod, or you could just roast your veggies in the oven with some of the vinaigrette. Nothing is wasted. So what you can do is you begin just by arranging your vegetables in a pattern. So I'm doing a slice of tomato, a slice of zucchini, a slice of yellow squash, and a slice of Japanese eggplant. And basically, I'm going to take this design and just continue around in a spiral. And when I'm finished, just a few extra things, and then into the oven it goes. And that is something else I need to touch upon. It's always good to have a sharp knife in your kitchen, uh, something that you feel comfortable with. You can use something as simple as a tomato knife that's serrated. This is a good tool to have also. And um, when people make this in an expensive, fancy restaurant, some fine dining ratatouille, people will use a mandolin, which is a very sharp tool that makes super ultra paper thin slices which is usually how this dish is made. However, I am making this easy. I am not going to sit there with my ruler and count my slices to be 1 16th of an inch. I am making it as thinly sliced as I want. And you can do the same. I didn't measure my slices either. So they're all about the same thickness. And that's important, you want uniformity so when your vegetables are cooking, they all cook evenly. So cut them as thin as you like. I'm not going to tell you how thinly to cut them. Make it work for you, for your skill level, and for your time. I'm gonna get building, and I'm going to come back and show you the dish before it goes in the oven. Hey everyone, that was fast. That took me maybe 15 minutes and I took my time. I have everything nicely tiled in my baking dish. Hopefully it doesn't slide out of the pan, but I want to show you. I just did a pattern and I didn't stuff it too full. Um, you just have to kind of get it in there so it will cook evenly. And before you pop it in the oven, you just want to get some salt and pepper and sprinkle it over you can actually season your vegetables before you tile them up in your dish, whatever works for you, and some fresh thyme. And at this time of the year, there is tons of thyme. If you're local and you need thyme and herbs, call me. I have a ton at the garden. So here is my ratatouille. I'm going to cover it and I'm going to pop it in the oven and roast it for about 25 to 30 minutes. And then I am going to uncover it and let it roast on the top. Normally, when you make a conventional ratatouille, you have to cook it very, very slowly, covered for two hours or more, and it steams it and it makes it very, very soft, which is how it is traditionally served. I really don't care for my vegetables to be mushy. If you do, 
cook it a little bit longer. You have to make it work for you. Now, this makes a great dish for summer because once you have prepared and roasted this, you can serve it for dinner, hot, or you could serve it cold or at room temperature. You could even serve this the next day. Uh, what a lot of people do is use it as a side dish. Tonight, I am just having it with some delicious seeded bread, and I made a dipping oil with some extra virgin olive oil and some garlic and some red pepper and a whole bunch of herbs, and we're gonna enjoy it with a couple of glasses of wine. We're gonna sit outside and enjoy this beautiful pre-summer day and eat our delicious ratatouille. So I'm gonna get this in the oven and then I will show you how it comes out. Bye. Well, our ratatouille has finished roasting and it is ready to eat. And look at all those delicious juices from the vegetables and the peeper rod and the extra virgin olive oil. This is going to be great for dipping. But before we do that, we need to add our vinaigrette, which is the third component. I saved one tablespoon of peeper rod from the bottom layer, and I mixed it with some balsamic vinegar and extra virgin olive oil and lots of fresh thyme. Can't really see it, but this is it. And this finishes the dish. And there you have it. You have this luscious, rich, healthy dish. We're gonna have some delicious bread and some cheese and some olive oil and some red wine. This is the best of Mediterranean cooking. So here we go, I'll show you what it looks like. It is super delicious. Get some of that delicious sauce and my finger. This is live. So there we have it. Our beautiful, delicious ratatouille. I hope you enjoy.